So thanks for coming, as I say. Um, hopefully at this stage, in terms of your EPQ, where should you be, what should you have done already? Um, having spoken to lots of you, and obviously I supervise students as well, most people have obviously filled out page one to nine of their logbooks with their supervisors. Hopefully you've produced a timeline um, to map out what you're planning to do and when you're planning to do it. Remember that forms part of the assessment, so you should have a timeline or some kind of indication of a plan and what you're going to do by when in terms of your research. And you should be ticking things off if it's a tick list or colouring in blocks if it's a Gantt chart. Whatever format you've got that in, you should be, as you're going along, um, indicating that you're sticking to your plan, or if you haven't, indicating that you haven't quite stuck to your plan and why. So it might be that you didn't quite get the article read that you planned to read, because of your mock results and you had to go to lots of revision classes. In that case, write that down. Remember, all of this, the timeline, the time plan, the uh, logbook, they all form part of the assessment. So it's really important if you haven't done a time plan already, that you get a time plan done quickly and perhaps make some of it retrospective because that forms part of your assessment, as does the logbook. So I'd expect you've got page one to nine of the logbook filled out. I'd also expect that you've got some kind of time plan and you're indicating where you are with it at the minute. Most people, don't panic if you haven't, have done some writing already, because remember at the last talk I suggested that you might start your writing as you go along to make your life a bit easier. Some people have written an introduction. For other people, it's another part of the uh, report that they've written. But I'd expect that by now you've done a bit of writing and made a head start. If you recall last time, um, the slide up there at the minute is one of the slides from the last talk. It's adapted slightly. Um, that's talking about the structure for a, a possible structure for the EPQ re written report. That won't be the same in all cases, but it was just one idea of how you might structure your report. And obviously you've been meeting with your supervisor and they've hopefully given you some guidance about how you might structure your report as well. So if you haven't already started writing, now is the time because we're now at what's called the mid project review phase of the EPQ which means you should meet up with your supervisor and fill out page 10 of your logbook. And the basic idea from AQA, the examining body, is that at this stage, you've done all of the research and you're ready in a good position to do the writing up. So you should be at that position. And I know lots of you have already started some of the writing early anyway. Is everybody kind of clear about where you should be? Yeah. So up there is a possible structure for the EPQ. I did show you that last time. Um, and I think we also talked about um, just some tips for things that you might include in your report, some hints and the kinds of things you want to avoid. So one of the main things you want to avoid is just writing a summary or re repeating stuff that you've written. The idea is with the EPQ that you make your own comments and evaluate what you've read. Um, so you evaluate the sources in terms of their reliability. Remember I told you you get marked for ev evaluating the sources themselves. Is a source reliable? Are you going to include it? that kind of analysis, where did it come from? Uh, why do you think it isn't reliable? If it's, for example, from a tabloid newspaper, it might be sensationalized. I think that was one of the examples I gave. So um, remember to put in sources that you've looked at and haven't included. So you should talk about those somewhere in your paperwork, say I haven't included those sources, and these are the reasons why, because you actually get marks for that as well. Okay. You will have to write an abstract for your EPQ. Um, for the gala evening, which we'll talk about at a later date, I've got another meeting planned to talk about the presentation, but for the gala evening, you'll have to produce an abstract. You don't need to worry about this yet, but just to give you the heads up. An abstract's a very short summary of your report so that somebody who hasn't got the time to read it can just quickly read your abstract. It's a paragraph or two. It tells them what the report's about, the main findings, and it allows them to decide whether or not to re read the whole report. That's the idea of an abstract. So at some point, you're going to have to write one of them. So you can perhaps be thinking about what to include in that as you go along with your writing. And that will actually go into a booklet for the EPQ gala evening uh, where everybody's abstracts will be available for everybody else to see. So you'll get to see what other people's EPQs are about as well. Um, obviously, in terms of your final written report, the presentation, the organisation of it's important. It needs to be clear and readable because you are assessed on how you present and how you've organised the materials that you've got as well. And leaving time to read through your work and getting somebody else to read through it is really important. And that's why I was keen to say, 
if you can previously to have started writing already to start and if you haven't already started writing I'd su suggest that you start in earnest um, now particularly over half term I understand that you've got your other subjects to revise for particularly in view of the mocks um, but if you could start that over half term it would be helpful because if you get a head start on the writing it will allow you the time to check double check change swap okay so the thing I want to talk about mostly today is um, how to reference and how to avoid plagiarism. So plagiarism is uh, not allowed, uh, the examination board don't allow it and also when you go to university it can cost you um, your qualification ultimately. It's taken very seriously academically and plagiarism is basically when you copy somebody else's work and try to pass it off as your own. That said, um, students have plagiarised in the past unknowingly um, because I've written about something but not referenced it properly and that's kind of become plagiarism. So there is a fine line between accidental plagiarism, I guess, and more intentional plagiarism. So you can accidentally plagiarise by not referencing properly is what I'm trying to say. So let's have a look at what plagiarism is and how you should reference. Obviously referencing is important because it gives credit um, to the people that have written the ideas that you're talking about and says how you've moved their ideas on. So it gives the reader a clear indication of what other people have said and how you've evaluated what they've said. And it also allows your readers to then look up the articles that you've referenced. If I'm reading your EPQ and I think, wow, this is a really interesting aspect of this EPQ, I'd like to know more, it'd be really easy for me to find out where more information is because I'll look at your reference and look it up myself. So that's another reason for referencing. And of course, it try, it's, if you reference properly, it stops you plagiarising. So the kinds of things that you might reference are listed up there, um, especially statistics. If you take some government statistics, you need to reference them, of course, for the EPQ, as well as referencing where they've come from. You also need to critically analyse them and say whether or not they're biased, why you've inc included them in your report or why you haven't, um, as we've discussed. So statistics, quotations... Uh, facts, examples of other people's work, what have other people written about your subject, um, there might be diagrams, images and photos, any of these things that you've got from somebody else you should reference saying where you've got them from. So how do you reference? Well to make your report readable you should reference as you go along so the references should be in the body of the text so you should say where each um, diagram, statistic or quote has come from as, as it's written. So just afterwards you should say where it's come from. It shouldn't be at the end or anything like that. There will be a bibliography at the end but the actual reference needs to be within the text. And the reader should be able to cross-reference those um, citations or references in the text in the bibliography at the end which I'll tell you about in a minute. So you need references within the text and then a bibliography at the end. Most importantly, to make this thing readable and show that you're, uh, how good you are, you should be consistent so that the system you use to reference one article or book should be the same for all the others. You don't want to swap and change your style of referencing. I'll show you what I mean by that. So perhaps the most well-known and well-used system is the Harvard system of uh, referencing. Um, so the basic idea is you're talking about um, a book, in this case, um, Darwin, 1972. And where you're talking about it within the text, which is white on the slide there, it's just got the author's name and then in brackets, the date of in which the book was published. So Darwin, 1972, famously outlined his theory of evolution. So the actual reference to Darwin with the date is within the text. So I could then look up Darwin, 1972 in your bibliography um, in order that I can find out more about it if I want to. And it's clear um, that you've referenced and acknowledged that it's Darwin's work that you're talking about, it's not your own work. So, in the bibliography at the end, the Harvard style of referencing suggests that um, it's who, when, what, where and by whom. So if you look at the Darwin example, that makes more sense. So it says Darwin, 1972, so it's easy to cross-reference with the um, citation in the body of the text. 
and then it tells you the name of the book and who it was published by. So that's a pretty standard system, Harvard referencing. I mean, you can look this up again on the um, Moodle when you watch the video back, or if you look on the internet at Harvard reference, and it's very well known, so you're about to find more information about it there if you wanted to. So in the Harvard system, books are references I've just shown you, but journals and websites are slightly different. Um, normally for a journal, it's the surnames of the authors that you put first with their initials and then the year, the title of the article, then in italics, the journal title, and then the volume and pages. And you'll see there, there's an example. Um, the authors are Wong with initials ST and Goodin, initial S. They published the article in 2009. It's, um, the title of their article was Overcoming Drug Resistance in Patients, blah, blah. And then uh, the name of the journal is in italics there, and then the volume in bold, etc. Again, you can look that up on the internet or watch these slides back to see how to reference a journal. And then underneath it shows you how to um, reference a website, so you've actually got the link there, and then it's, tell you, it's told you when, um, when the person that wrote the report, the EPQ, has accessed that, because obviously websites are subject to change. So it's important that if you reference a website, that in your bibliography it says when you referenced it, because it might change, okay? So obviously plagiarism is when you're using something that's been published or unpublished without acknowledging that it's somebody else's work. And it's easy to commit accidentally, as I said to you a few minutes ago. And as I said, many students unknowingly plagiarise, both at uh, your level and at university, um, because they think they're talking about the subject generally when actually they're talking about somebody else's ideas they've read about. And as soon as you talk about somebody, somebody else's ideas that you've read up about, really you should cite them. So here's just some different sources of information which you will have also had to critically evaluate for your EPQ. Um, to avoid plagiarism, make sure that you acknowledge the sources. So take good notes, making sure you've got sufficient de detail in how you trace the sources. And um, of course, you should have critically analysed all of them anyway. So all of the sources you've used, you should have said, I am using it because of this. This is, it. This, is this source's strengths, its weaknesses. And then in the text, you'll have referred to it as well, and it will appear in your bibliography. And obviously, following a standard system like the Harvard system, will enable you to do this more consistently. So notes can be quite useful um, to help you understand what you've just read. And these can be submitted as part of your evidence. Lots of students previously have submitted a really good written report, a reasonable logbook, but then not much supplementary evidence. You can submit a well-written report a logbook that reflects your research journey and then supplementary evidence like some indication of time planning, um, some indication that you've critically analysed your resources, notes on interviews you've had with people, notes you've written about the um, books that you've read. All of that can go in and be submitted as part of your research evidence. The EPQ is assessed as a piece of research. It's not assessed as how well you've written your report. That's really important. The report's obviously the centre of your EPQ, but it will be assessed on the whole of your research journey from beginning to end. And all of the evidence forms a big part of that and the um, assessment criteria, which I will um, give to your supervisors to pass on to you shortly. Your EPQ is assessed on the whole of your research, not just the finished product in terms of the um, project itself. AQA are interested in your research process more than the product, which is a written report. So some final hints about referencing. If you're in doubt, should I reference or shouldn't I? Of course you can ask your supervisor, but also probably the best advice is if you think you should perhaps re reference, then reference. You're not going to be penalised, and it certainly wouldn't be plagiarism, to over-reference. So if you're talking about somebody else's work or ideas, statistics or diagram, then say so. 
So make sure you record the source when you're taking notes. So any notes that you've taken and any that you continue to make, every time you take a note about a particular idea or a particular thing, remember to jot down exactly where you got it from because that's going to make your life a bit easier, isn't it? You might want to use a colour scheme to help you with that in terms of different quotes, etc. And always make notes in your own words. Um, and obviously, the majority of your written report has got to be in your own words as well, although you can quote other people. The idea is it's your written report, it's your views on what other people have done and other people's ideas. Obviously, cutting and pasting, therefore, is a pretty bad idea. And be prepared to go and find a reference for something you already know. So if it's a scientific claim or uh, something you're presenting as fact, how do you know it's true? Can you reference it? Has anybody got any questions about anything to do with uh, referencing plagiarism or indeed the EPQ generally at this stage? Obviously, if there's any individual problems that you've got, um, either meeting up with your supervisor or how do I set out my EPQ because it's slightly different to everybody else's, then by all means come and see me at the end or you can see me um, in Ash 27 most lunch times. Has anybody got any general questions at the minute? No? Right, if you do think of any that you didn't want to ask in front of everybody else, obviously ask um, on your way out or at another point. Other than that, thank you very much for coming and don't forget you can watch it all again on the uh, Moodle if there's anything that you missed.